All right, so we're back. Yeah, welcome back. And uh, we're still heading towards Tripolis, Tripolis. And uh, I still have to assign a few skills here, which is good. So just uh, maybe burst fire, because this is also the machine gunner. Just more knowledge. Rate of fire for the 75 millimeter. And more grit. Oh, everyone's getting promoted. Wow. And there we go, another refit. Still 26 tanks. <laughs> yeah, 26. Yeah, I've made a note to proportionally reduce the number of refit days for shorter campaigns. Maybe so, yeah, maybe. Because it's just it just gets a little... I mean, you don't need that many refits. If there was a way to sort of um, save the, the ratio of refits and combat weeks and keep that ratio when you reduce the time of the campaign, that would be nice. Yeah, that's my idea, because that's how it works in practice, basically, because you can specify any number of combat days. Um, the options that you're given are a ratio of that. So it's like 80 percent, 50 percent, 30 percent, something like that. So I can just take the, um, the uh, refit days and reduce them while still keeping a minimum at the same time. Yeah, so I rolled a one, which would be the steward one. Um, I'm not going to pick it, obviously, but I just want to say that the steward is actually a pretty good tank in North Africa. So the 37 millimeter gun isn't too bad. It's got quite a few machine guns, and the armor is okay, really. But I'm not going to trade a, a steward one for a grand one. That would be insane. No. All right, we're keeping this. Now, this, this, the campaign might skip this event, or maybe not. This was um, a spoiling attack. Um, right now, we're at the point in the campaign where the British and their allies got ready to attack the Marath line. And the Afrika Corps tried to forestall the attack with um, an assault on Medenine, Medenine, whatever this is called yeah. in, in Tunisia. It didn't work out for them too well. It was more of a, you know, the attack didn't really succeed. It was not a disaster, but it didn't it was inconclusive, I guess. Yeah, it didn't reach their I, objectives. My guess is we're probably going to jump to the Marath line right now. Let's see. I just I'm a little flummoxed because oh. I don't know why after refitting it's it's giving you a combat day, but then you can immediately skip past it. That should that shouldn't it shouldn't happen that way. And what happened is we we just skipped all the combat days. Right. Oh, we might have just skipped the whole marathon line, actually. Oh, well, oh boy. Possibly, because it's only picking eight days throughout the entire campaign. No, I think I think there's a refit between the Battle of Medinina and the marathon line. So mm -hmm. maybe it's this. Okay, I'm going to roll the dice again, whatever. <laughs> uh, that's a 35. We don't have that on the list. So again, 11. Oh! That's interesting. A Lee 6, which is an upgraded um, Grand tank. But it doesn't so, have as good armor. Better engine. Much better engine, actually. But worse armor. On the okay. turret. Hmm. So I'm guessing it's a cast versus a, um, a uh, um, you know, plate, plate turret. Yeah, it was this, this Chrysler A57 multibank engine thing. It was very rare. Is it worth it? Maybe, because when, when we have to, we haven't had this kind of situation yet, but if we have to drive away from infantry, having a good engine is really good, really useful. I think I'll take it, just a little less tur turret armor, which is probably going to get me killed eventually, just for dramatic reasons, but um, well, we'll see. I'll, think, I'll take it. So I can leave everything as it is, all the crew can stay where they are, perfect. 
the British had very, very weird uh, naming conventions when it came to the Lee and Grand tanks. So the first one was called Grand One, and then the second was called Lee something. And it's it's really confusing. It was super difficult to research this, and I might have gotten it wrong, to be honest. Well, we can always update it later on. All right. So, um, yeah, this is funny. The whole crew was promoted for waiting around in reserve, basically. Okay, nice. Um, let's give a um, quick trigger and time on target. You can just have some morale and some grit. Nothing. Morale and knowledge. That was pretty, pretty good. Four points there. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, this is the... I hope this is going to be the next event. We'll see. Um, so what happened um, at the Marath line was um, a part of the British Army, the 8th Army, uh, commanded by Montgomery, attacked the Marath line head-on, but that was more of a, you know, um, a diversionary attack. Mm -hmm. And a part of the force... Um, because there there are mountains west to the Marath line, and a part of the British forces, um, with I think, actually Australian troops at the spearhead at the front, they basically moved around these mountains through a mountain pass, and they tried to flank the enemy, and that was eventually what forced the Africa Corps to fall back. And in this campaign. Um, I was trying to follow the 7th Armored Division whenever I could. I think they were part of a flanking force. Mm -hmm. So we're actually flanking the Marath line now. Yeah. Okay. This is called... Um, this was called the left hook. <laughs> um, yeah, I think so there's, we, de there's definitely a bug here because when you come back from refit, it shouldn't place you in a subsequent combat day at the end as if you've already skipped it. Though it's... Maybe it's nice to at least read about the events so you can keep track of, of, of the narrative a little mm -hmm. bit. You know. Okay, so this is the part where they actually charged into the left flank of the Germans and Italians here. Okay. So, so it's a battle, this, this but is, you've got pretty good support. Yeah. Oh, and I can actually see this now. This is Gabes. Gabes is spelled with an accented, accented letter, you know? Oh, but it's, it's not being displayed. Like, like an E. With with a with an uh, accent like this, yeah, and it doesn't display it right. I was kind of afraid of that. Okay, but at least it doesn't crash the game. Um, so uh, Gabes, just to explain this, Gabes is a town on the coast of Tunisia, north of Maref, north of the Maref line, and we are now trying to take Gabes to cut off the, the German and Italian forces for the south. Right. What eventually happened was they retreated before that was before that happened. But this is going to be a, a fairly tough battle now because there'll be a lot of resistance. Looking forward to it. Okay. Oh, oh God! I you didn't load your seventy-five. <laughs> well, okay. you can, you can um... call for resupply right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, too late. Yes. This is going great. You just have to um... make do. I think the hull gunner should be fired, or whoever whoever is responsible for. Um... For supply <laughs> it's no i only have ap shells <laughs> amazing Look okay, your coax. Um, i do an overrun <laughs> okay can somebody please shoot at these guys thank you at least they had the presence of mind to load up all right um so flanking the enemy is all about speed, you know, and decisiveness. And it's really great when you have to start your attack by requesting resupply. <laughs> Waiting 20 minutes. Okay, be careful. This time, don't press... I pressed tab instead of Q. That's how I skip, skip this. Um. To the ready back. There we go. Excellent. What I'll do is I'll, there's already a warning if you don't load 
any ammo at all. But I think at the moment, if you if you load ammo in one gun and but miss the other, it doesn't give you the warning. So what I'll do is I'll update that and make sure it checks all of your guns. And if it, any of your guns don't have any ammo load, it'll just give you a confirmation pop up. Okay, so this might be um, a Tiger and an 88 millimeter gun. I'm <laughs> staying away from this. Could be two 88s. One, one mobile and one stationary. That's a little better, yeah. I think what I'll actually try to do is I'll try to move to the fortress and maybe use that as a bridgehead to move further. Um, okay, that might be a Maga. Or just a Panzerjäger, if we're lucky. The Panzerjägers are not too bad. Could also be a Simovente, we'll see. We'll just fi we'll find out. Okay. Or a pack 40 and a tiger. Though to be fair, these can these can also be um, captured Matildas or Valentines yeah. with a bit of luck. But I'm not going to risk it if, if I can, as long as I have another reasonable option here. I'll just call in an artillery strike and attack these armored cars with infantry support. That should be okay. Got rid of a truck anyway. The AT, I don't think the AT team was going to do much to you. Yeah, that's a. I always confuse them. Panzer Schwewagen, and the other one is Schützenpanzerwagen, I think. So it's it's literally an armored scout car. Hmm. Schützenpanzerwagen is uh, like a rifleman tank car, armored, whatever. Or armored car. Yeah, armored car, right? Either way, it's not a big deal. Yesterday was the anniversary of the Battle of Cam Cambrai, which was the first time that tanks were actually deployed in combat. That was in 1918, right? Uh, I think so, either 17 or 18. So I think the tank was a fairly late invention in world war one yeah it would have had to have been um 1917 right because in 1918 the war would have already been over by now on 11th of november right yeah you're yeah. right you're so right. yeah so 1917 20th uh november okay i was thinking about doing a sale but the the next steam sale is coming up pretty soon anyway. The autumn autumn sale, I guess this would be. It's not like this this game is very expensive anyway. No, but you'd be surprised. Even just ten percent off, which is like less than a dollar, will you know triple or quadruple sales for a few days. I think people it's more psychological. People just want to feel like they're getting a good deal. But I'm actually like this as well. When when there's something on sale on GOG, I take a more careful look at it you know mm -hmm. yeah it's true even if it's just like five euros instead of 10 euros and you, you might be asking yourself what's the difference okay i don't really have to do anything here just i just have my squad mate tanks deal with this infantry we have a full squad again luckily Oh, they are routed, but they're coming closer. <laughs> Maybe they're trying to escape, but they don't quite know where to go. Okay, well, bad choice, guys. Bad choice. Actually, let's use the let's let's do the full machine gun thing here. Wait, ah. I can't use the whole machine gun. No, you'd, have, you'd have to pivot. Okay, but I can fire two machine guns. 
commander and gunner. Yeah, and they're moving it's close range. This is yeah, it's not gonna go well for them. So they probably just panicked. Or they were trying to surrender. <laughs> yeah. One or, the, one or the other. You know, a little war crime here and then. Whatever. It would actually be kind of cool if, if that was, um, you know, a thing in the game. I think we chatted about this once. Yeah, one day. Uh, yeah, it's, it's on my longer term to-do list. I once had a, some time ago I had a ridiculous situation. There was a Daimler scout car. It was one of the German desert campaigns. It was in front of me. It was immobilized. It had no chance. And I kind of thought to myself, why don't they just climb out of the car and surrender at this yeah, point? You yeah. know? No, it shouldn't take too much work to add in as a as a game mechanic, and it would be a it would be a nice addition. Okay, I'm I'm going to bring some, actually some armored cars into this because it's just infantry and a truck. The armored cars will do pretty well against um, infantry units. Oh well, there's nothing there. Yeah, that should do it. So I kind of hit the engine, I guess, something like that. Yeah. Pretty quick. Or the gas tank. Or the driver. And the driver was carrying a crate of TNT on his lap, and that exploded, and it was just. It's not a good day. It could, have, could have been a supply truck, actually, with, with yep. HE shells in the back, something like that. Okay, I think at this point I'm going to hold my position because um, those are both very bad. Oh yes, this is this is not a good place to be in. My hope here is that allied forces will just attack one of these zones and sort of clear away from me. That could work, and I mean your crew could have a chance to rest as well. It's not yeah. too bad, but could make a difference. No, no help. Just be patient. I'm surprised that they haven't attacked you. Oh, there we go. <laughs> there we go. So I'm now being flanked while flanking the Marath line. So this is basically just the left hook, and now the, the Germans are responding with a right hook against me. <laughs> okay, what is it? Oh, oh boy. Um, 105. Alright. Let's destroy it quickly. Reduced, okay. We got some of the crew. Oh no. Oh at least okay, it had to pivot at least and and alright, so that made a big difference taking up some of the crew. This might not save my life, but may I suggest at this point that when an enemy unit is reduced, they are also automatically pinned. That would make sense, wouldn't it? Yes, yeah, no, that makes sense. Please don't hit me. It's a, it's, it's a heat round, too. Okay, still alive. I should be able to win this. Uh oh, uh oh. First you have to hit, though. Oh no, ho oh, ho! Wait, why did, why did it use AP? I wonder if it maybe it only had limited. All right. I think it's this particular German artillery gun had armor piercing ammunition. I would have oh, thought boy. that um, heat would have been better at this range. Ooh. Oh no! That's it. It hit the hole. Yeah. Uh, oh, I, I'm still the tank You're is okay. still there. Um, one of my crew was kind of. All right. So it penetrated the hull. It had spalling, um, but your crew is okay. It wasn't all that. It must have just hit the edge or something. I can fire again, or I can retreat. Oh, 
boy. I mean, if I hit it one more time, I should be okay. I'm gonna risk it. Two more times is better. Three more times is even better than that. 28 firepower, yeah. Yeah, that does yeah. it. Whew. So now we, now we have a big hole in our hole. <laughs> And we just keep on fighting. Well, that's good. It's nice in the desert, right? It's just extra extra ventilation. But th that's what the desert rats are all about. They, they just keep fighting no matter what. And it's, you know, it's it's another impossible... Maybe, you know, the, the loader or so or the gunner should have an, a hatch now. <laughs> yeah. Because there's a hole. <laughs> uh, yeah, it would, I would ha it would have to be a whole new mechanic, not a hatch, but just a hole so this, that you can't. This actually close. worked out worked out in my favor. So this zone was um, taken or attacked by our forces, and now there's only a tank and an infantry squad. That should be all right. I'm going to request air support here to deal with this tank and lower a couple of a AP shells, and we should be okay. Maybe I can get this as well. Maybe some anti-tank guns would be nice here. Uh, the armor support. I'm just realizing something. Maybe, maybe it's because I made a mistake there, but. Shouldn't the 17 pounder be here as well? Possibly. So my approach for unit support is I choose those units that are the most mobile because they need to be brought up next to you as you move into a zone. And the 17 pounder, even though it can be towed, it's not as mobile as the smaller guns. Ah, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. So we could because... include it, but I feel like the general rule for these should be they should only be the most mobile. Um, and that's why the, I think that usually the largest artillery guns are not included. It's the smaller ones or the mobile ones that are included. Yes. I, I was just asking because it was introduced in February 1943, I think. Yeah. So it, it would be in this in this battle, actually. But maybe not as a support unit. Fair enough. Okay, so the six-pounders would be pretty good just as well here. Let's see. Uh, okay. I just had to check whether this is the anti-tank barrier, the new one. But it's not. It's, it's the one with the machine gun. Okay. Um, might want to go hold down, actually. Mm, okay. Se movente. Nice. And it'll do it. Now let's take a look at the village here. Mm. Not too bad. I mean, there's a lot of units, but... The tank destroyer is likely the only one that might pose a problem. Yeah, correct. You still have a full squad. You can call in might, support too. We might get it with an with an airstrike. I'll I'll try an airstrike and some ground support. Just AP rounds and anti armor. It's what they call a target rich environment. So 
the truck is gone. That, nice. oh, that was a, that was a beautiful asteroid. That, yeah, that was great. They probably sort of destroyed the whole village, but it was a beautiful asteroid anyway. Just feel bad for the people who actually live here, you know. Um, yeah, they didn't ask for this. Yeah, just a just an a Zahariana, an AS forty two. That's it. I could just relax at this point. Okay, that seems like the least mm -hmm. dangerous option. Uh, some artillery would be nice anyway. Seems like it's trying trying to withdraw. Oh. It's not gonna make it. Even if it wants to it sort of charge us. I guess depends on what it's transporting, I suppose. It's probably a flamethrower team in there or something nasty. Okay, just manage the ready rack. Yeah, because it's late. It's past uh, past sundown. Nice. It's quite a variety. Yes, and I, I'm pretty sure we haven't. Yes, we haven't even seen all of the units in the campaign yet. Mm -hmm. There's so much variety in these African campaigns that you can play through them and not even see all the units. Yeah, there's just, just so much stuff. Yeah, between. We all the different forces are involved uh, too. We haven't even encountered a lot of Panzers yet, just uh, I think a couple of Panzer twos, and there are so many f Panzer three variants, Panzer four variants, um, quite a lot of stuff you can encounter. But you've been avoiding mostly when there's a heavy tank or a medium tank too, so wisely, I think. And this is the short variant of the campaign, you know, yeah. the short, shortened version. All right. Um, I'm going to go with target. F no, actually, with, with the desert skill first. Target focus is, is not entirely useless in the desert because it might rain <laughs> and, you know, in the spring or winter, maybe. Yeah. Once once in a blue moon. But it's it's much more important in, in a you know European setting or mm -hmm. in Russia where you, you quite often have um, fog or rain, this, these kind of weather conditions. This is probably going to get more interesting if, if there are, uh, or once there are sandstorms in the game. I don't know if a sandstorm would count as precipitation because it's not falling from the sky, right? It's being whipped up by wind. But I might have to change the uh, change the description then. 
Yeah, okay, but but the idea is the same, isn't it? That yeah, you can you can ignore things in yeah between you and the target. Focus on the target. Yeah, yeah. Okay, go with the desert skill here first. All right, uh, just more knowledge. Time on targets. Great. Some perception, maybe, because he can spot stuff. <laughs> Here we go again. Get all the refitting opportunities you could want. Uh, 29 isn't in the list. Hang on. 23. So that would be... Oh, a Churchill 4. I think we'll take that. That's, I consider that better than a than a grant. I would say so, yeah. Because you can go hold down with this thing and still use your main gun. And it's got better front. It's got better armor all around, except for the turret on the front. Not as the good of a thing, gun. The only thing that's a little bit of, you know, problematic sort of is that this is an AP only gun in 1943. It's, oh. It, the six the six pounder is pretty good against tanks. But taking out guns at long range will be an issue. But I, th I think we can still, this is still an improvement. I'll take the Churchill. We'll have to kick out one of the crew members yes. and see. Um, okay, let's, let's be very, very careful about this before I press something that I might regret. Yeah, don't this press enter regret. until you're ready. This, is the, this was the, the 37 millimeter gunner. And now he's my gunner, that makes sense. One of the loaders. So who is who is white? White is the driver. I think the 75 millimeter gunner is now in the driver position. Yeah. So that's that's not right. Okay. And you're the assistant driver. Now the question is do I want a loader in the assistant driver position or a gunner? I think I'll go for the loader here because he's got better he's stats, got better stats more yeah. grid, more survivability. Uh, who's the better gunner, Taylor or Alan? I think Alan is better. A little bit better, yeah. He's got more skills. Okay. Goodbye, Taylor. Have a nice war. Uh, I've already done that. Thank you. The Battle of Wadi Akarit took place shortly after the Marath line. There was a there's there's a stretch of land between the sea and an a salt lake in uh, Tunisia. Mm -hmm. That was another line of defense. And uh, um, the, at this point, the British had just a uh, huge numerical superiority, and they just frontally charged that position and uh, drove the Germans and the Italians away. And that was pretty much. You could say almost the end of the war in North Africa because there were no more defensive lines. There were no more defensive positions, really. Right. At after this point, after that, it was just a retreat. Yeah, it was just um, taking Tunisia, about taking Tunisia, moving into Tunisia, taking all the towns, um, you know, all the points of interest. And at that point, the battle was lost for the Germans and Italians. So we're pretty close to the end. Yep, yeah, that's exactly. So we skipped another event there. Badi Akarit has fallen, and now it's just. There's going to be one last nasty surprise in the campaign, um, which I'm not going to spoil, but this is now just uh, advance and spearhead missions with little resistance. Pretty good. Let's just check all the crew and move on. Oh, ah, we, oh, we get a little bit of HE, but it's limited. Yeah. Right. And APDS, but not this early in the war. If if you were playing a later campaign with the same tank, then you would be able to get it. But at this point, it wasn't yet issued. Okay, fair enough. We're going to look for tanks, specifically. We're now a tiger hunter. 
attack squad, which is probably a bad thing. But we'll see. <laughs> yeah, with the, <laughs> I mean, there we go, tanks. This is exactly what I want. A village All right. full of tanks. You're welcome. Um, let's do it. Roll into tank village here. Oh, they they rolled away. An armored car. That'll do. Excellent. So basically, anything you can use AP shells on. Yes. Yeah, that works. Oh, yeah, that'll do it. You know, out of all the portraits I, I, I've painted so far, I'm kind of most proud of the Churchill portraits. I think they look very distinctive. It looks like the real thing, yeah. Because I, I'm, I really try to make them, you know, huge in the hole and so, sort of small in the turret. That's what they look like. And the later variants with additional armor look even more ridiculous because then I added <laughs> some more hole on the sides here. They almost look like a Great War tank that's been just, you know, had a turret stuck on the top. You can really, you can see the original, like the Mark IVs, same kind of design, these enormous tracks along the side that run like around the hull rather than trying to stick the tracks at the bottom and have a hull that goes above it. Yeah. So I'm supposed to capture a position with an artillery gun. This is, this well, could be- Call in support. This is what support is for, right? Yeah, I know. So artillery I'll and load my my two HP shells here and call in artillery. Yeah. I should do it. Oh, it's very close. You come up over a sand dune and it's just it's right there. Okay. Seventy five isn't too bad. Got good armor. It's facing away. Okay. Um, pull down seven percent. Come on. No. Okay. No. Okay. Let's start firing. Fair enough. So if Yay, I overrun now, it can't yeah. pivot and fire, right? You fixed that, didn't you? Sorry, what's that? If I want to overrun, um, can it pivot and fire um, immediately when I overrun it? No, I just fixed that. So it's called defensive fire is the, the sort of attack that they get when you go in for close combat. And I believe in the most recent update, it should not be possible for them to pivot, to pivot. Okay, let's find out if, if the <laughs> yeah, let's find works. out if it worked. <laughs> so both machine guns and just overrun. That should work. Yes. Yeah, that's that's a that's an excellent chance to hit now. Nice shooting. Yeah, with six machine guns into the gun's position. Yeah, that'll do it. All right, I'm going to have to go. Um, do you want to save this game and continue this later? Or it's up to you if you want I to think, keep playing. I think we can keep this for the next stream, the next recorded stream. Okay. And um, I'll stream some more today, but I'll try out my the campaign I've just finished, the last, um, you know, the Operation Torch German campaign. Okay. Because good. I want I, I want to play test that anyway, so I might as well give some someone the chance to watch me doing it. Yeah, know? somebody's on the Discord channel; they can they can tune in, and watch you play through it. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Take care. Take care.